What's up YouTube, Moose coming at you once again with another unboxing. So let's get started. Alright, today we're taking a look at this 135th scale uh, German 8.8 centimeter Flak 18 anti-aircraft gun from AFB Club. I've never done one from them and the Flak 88s are always pretty freaking cool, so let's dig into the box. Hang on a second. All right, so like I said before, it's the German 8.8 centimeter Flak 18 anti-aircraft gun from AFE Club. It is kit number AF35083. Um, some of their bullet points about it, they say it com complex construction faithfully reproduced in 135th scale a ha, pull aluminum, I think they meant full aluminum, barrel with rifling detail, rear rubber tire, and you can either do it in the toe or the firing position. Functional equilibrators in brass, functional uh, corresponding needles. I'm sorry, I'm reading upside down. For gun elevation with the optical sight and hydro pneumatic, recirculator tube in brass photo etch metal parts for super detail so as you can tell there's going to be a lot of detail on this one take a look at the side here so they show in the toe position here a couple and then in the firing position as well as the transport trailer on the other side they show you a few details of the kit so the photo etch, the tires, some of the wire and stuff like that. So I guess let's dig into the box. Uh, we'll pull the instructions aside to start with. So not in a lot of sprues. The first sprue on the top is molded in like a tan color. It'll come out of the bag and has some of the like frame pieces. So like here's the side of the frame, some of the parts of the barrel surround. I'm not sure what a lot of this stuff is. Um, I'll just give you a quick overview of the sprue. If I can get myself on frame. So the detail is pretty good. Um, I can tell it's starting to become a little older kit because the detail of it is not quite as fine or as sharp as some of the newer kits that I see on the market. I'm not sure the exact year. So this bag has a duplicate set of sprues. So I'll just show you the one, but it's got some of the like wheels and some of like the elevation controls, I think a bunch of little fiddly bits. Like I said, I'm not too familiar with the Flak 88, so I can't really call out any parts. I mean, who doesn't know what a Flak 88 is, but I can't tell you what a lot of the little fiddly bits are gonna be for. Um, the next sprue here has a lot of the larger parts. Well, this bag's just being rod. I guess I didn't want. So uh, you can show the model with uh, like the shield. And I assume these are all the little thing fly or butterfly like knobs to put it on there. There's some like support plates over here. I assume that's like the main pivot point, um, like the side arms of it. Just give you a quick general overview. Because like I said, again, I mean, like you can see detail on those there, but it's just not the sharpest. Uh, Next bag, oh, we'll skip that one. So then there's a little tiny sprue molded in the 
tan color again. That include, you know, has like tools and a few other little miscellaneous things. It looks like some sights or something like that there. And then the last larger sprue has a lot of what looks like the trailer pieces. So like there's the fender wells, like a leaf spring there, there's um, torsion arms, there's a few more tools all the various parts that would make up the trailer. And finally, the last sprue is more of the like frame of it. So like, I think these are the undersides of the actual main body of it. And that I believe is the bottom of like the, um, I can't think of the name of the, the, where the pivots, <laughs> the pivot point of it, a few more tools and stuff like that. And so on, I think the gun actually sits on those. And then inside that bag as well, sealed to the inside of that bag as well is the actual body of the gun. It's a one piece, so everything goes off that. So like I said, the things fit on the bottom, all kinds of options. So it's actually smaller than I figured. I mean, I've seen a flak 88 in person, but then 135th scale it just seems diminutive. diminutive. So then they also include this little baggie here. I'm not gonna pull everything out. I might pull. But the bag has a couple different sizes of chain and then like some nylon or like fishing line of sorts for some of the rigging I assume for it. And then here, Another little baggie is the brass pieces that they were talking about. So there's two of them the same length and diameter. There's a third. So for the equilibrators and stuff like that. So that's a pretty nice touch. I've never had a model include detail like that. Um, like I said, metal barrel. Really nicely done. There's plenty of detail on it. Set that down. Hopefully the camera focus. The camera's not going to pick it up, but there is rifling detail in the end of the barrel. It is recessed slightly. The other end just super glues in. Uh, and the last thing in the bag, box, well, not last, is a bag, I'll just pull one out with the rubber tires. So very malleable, very soft, lots of great detail. They will need sanding for the uh, mold line, unfortunately, but I don't know if you can see that or not. And then the last thing in the box is the decals. So there are numerous markings to go on and I'm not sure where anything goes, but there's like white, yellow and black markings for a lot of the stuff on there. They look very nicely crisp. I mean, they're just lines more or less. 
and then a small fret of photo etch that includes things like the stakes that would go into the ground to hold it into place and I think like hand wheels or something like that. So that's everything that's in the box. Let me grab the instructions real quick and we'll take a look at that. So the instructions are in black and white, unfortunately. I wish more companies would start putting some color stuff in there. But this gives you a little bit of history of the Flak 18. Um, they include color callouts for GSI, so Hobby Color, Mr. Color, Mr. Color Spray, as well as Humbrol, Revell, and Life Color. I usually use uh, Mr. Color, so I'll use that. Not many colors needed, which I wouldn't figure. So start off by building the like support for the gun and they do call out a few colors as needed throughout. Otherwise I think things are just going to be whatever color you want to do it. So adding, there's quite a few little detail parts, which is kind of nice. Um, they give you a, like a side view of what you're adding because it's not exactly clear here in step three, for example, where these fit, which is nice. Um, they show you how to fit, again, more of the stuff to the gun barrel. Then we start building, I don't know if that's like the equilibrator or what there, but first pieces of, oh, I guess I missed that somewhere. Yeah, the brass back there. I'm not gonna pretend I know what I'm talking about, guys, sorry. So here's the barrel being fit to some of the plastic to actually put, and they call out that you need to use like a CA glue fitting like the support and here they actually model the breech of the gun um, again more bits to that just continues here we start building up like the side frame of it adding all kinds of the details elevation controls and here's one of the photo etch pieces getting fit to like the hand wheels or I'm assuming hand wheels are like a spool of some sort um, angle indicator goes on and then at this point you have to make your first decision on if you want it the firing or the uh, transporting because the seat depends on that as far as I can tell that is the only thing that varied before we start building up more of the other side of the support including some again like the spools or whatever they shall be so again, if you want to do it without the shield, you have to make a few changes. I'm probably going to do the shield. I want it to have everything. So here we start building like the support box of it. Um, again, building and adding, putting the two halves together to that center support box. Building, these might be the equilibrators. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to do my research on what the actual parts are. So you build two of those and then they get added. And they do very specifically call out and say, do not glue these parts because again, it should function, should be able to elevate it and depress it. Um, more of the mechanical part of that. Here we're building the stakes and adding one of them and some of the detail parts to the main frame, turning it around and adding more, including the, like the support feet and an access hatch in the side of the frame. More details that I believe the towing end of it going on there and some bracing for that. Then we actually get onto the pivot point of it, building that up and attaching it. And then some of the other fiddly bits, you know, the covers and stuff that go around, hand wheels to crank things, some of the tools going on. Then down here we have 25A. If you're doing it in the firing position, you do this. So this is building up one of the support feet or actually it looks like both the support feet no it's just one and again they call for not gluing a bunch of things throughout so that it, i assume can you know you can raise it up and lower it and whatnot so 25b if you're doing it transported so i don't know if there's a part difference or not but like how you assemble it maybe 26a does the other leg 26b again the other leg if you're doing a transport and then in step 27, 
you bring those legs and attach them to the main thing as well as add the actual gun to the mount to the you know the pivot point and add the um barrel retention strap i guess i would call it for if you're transporting it or firing position obviously you know to keep it from doing step 28 we build the shield adding all those little like butterfly um nuts that i was talking about 29a if you're adding the shield you fit that and if you don't do it you have to just scrape a few things off and skip on with it in step 30 we start adding some of the chain for the different parts that i with like hand crank wheels to operate it 31 well maybe actually i bet step 30 is the start of the trailer because here in 31 we start getting into more trailer looking bits you know adding that to a leaf spring start building up the frame with some of the various parts so that again it should operate and steer the way i see it it looks like it should steer adding the wheels to that step 34 fit and fenders and some of the bits to that 35 putting together a bunch of tools and adding them to the step 36 we're building up the other end of the transport dolly so building up the suspension aspect of that and then adding the wheels there's the leaf springs and all that before finally adding like the frame carrier frame to it in step 38 uh 39 the fenders 40 is just a bunch of detail parts 41 you're building up these drums i assume that's where that spool of uh, or the coil of um like the fishing line gets added it doesn't say how much but I'm assuming maybe all of it. 42, building up more of the like transport stuff for it. 43 is actually fitting the gun to the transport dolly. Same with 44, adding one end and then the other. And then finally we get to the different markings. So there's one for North Africa, which is dark gray, another North Africa in dark yellow, another in North Africa, dark yellow, and some red brown on the end of the gun. Um, and then here's the Luftwaffe, uh, Dunkirk. So dark gray, and then the Eastern front 42 in a dark gray and North coast of France again in a dark gray. So I'm probably gonna do it in one of the dark gray colors because or maybe even that that'd be pretty cool but i don't know if i want to do camo on the shield that might be a little hard i haven't decided and then the back just gives you a parts list and stuff so um i hope you all enjoyed watching that unboxing video and i'll catch y'all next time